So here's a very good top down view, if you can imagine it now. One destiny, it's gonna get high. The lines is so there's two staircases, light on stars in heavenly coming down. Comet towers are burning sun, and drawing the through the solar winds. The light issues a primal call, elucidates a truthful face. Thought reflects a symbolic mind. A prophet born of millenarian lies. See, I mean, a similar statement of spirally opposite direction. Master of time, lawful divine, gives you the world to his hands. Analogy reflective. Law of equivalent state. As above, so below. Apocalyptic resoundings will blow. Cyclic notes from octaves we mold. A source full of sequence to show. from Alkorobi and we're at the temple complex so this temple complex means it's going to be a um, multi useful structure which is going to serve not just me but uh, visitors so this is in the corner of the land and it's called the temple to Gaia so effectively I'm building a, um, a type of religious building but I would say more one based on my personal spirituality and my unconscious motive now the reason why I say that is because um, I'm allowing the environment to effectively dictate uh, my course of actions and my decisions and so I believe in something called the unconscious motive which is a way of making repressed conscious activity more conscious and I do this through my creativity and through my art. So the structure that uh, you're seeing at the moment will become something wonderful in my visions. And it's a long way to get to the final vision, if there is such a thing. When is a garden ever complete? The way to look at things is that you always have an input of resources coming in from somewhere. And that can change your final design. So I'm doing something like a rolling permaculture here. I'm waiting for resources in terms of energy, money, uh, materials and volunteers, ideas, that type of thing. And then I put them to, to use and the unconscious motive gives me the power to create something which is holistic. And that's a very important thing because if, the deeper you go into your mind, the more creative you are. And creativity is why we are here, the human race, the, the, the planet and the whole cosmos, it's to be creative. Right, so, this is the staircase and it's gonna be infilled with the last of my excavations which are beyond the rim here, which is above the phone. Um, it's gonna be infilled, this stone staircase, which is gonna be a, a fantastic uh, display and entranceway to my temple to Gaia. It's uh, designed um, principally from the idea I took from a, a 
museum when I was in Naples. I saw the staircase spiraling upwards and it, it levered out onto a, a, a platform and then it sort of crossed each other and came back upon itself and spiraled back up to the next level. And then it spiraled again to the next level. So it was almost like a double helix. And that was the inspiration after two years of just letting this project uh, simmer away and not doing anything with it and focusing my energy on other parts of the land, according to my resources. I then um, came back to this and it's such a wonderful feeling. It's what gets you up in the morning, you know, when you know that you can do something creative. Not just a performance, a creative, it's something new. Okay, camera in hand, take a look at what I'm doing and visualize. Right, the only way I could do this is if I start drawing something out of my imagination uh, or start seeing something in when I'm in an inspired place or mood like I was when I was in Rome. Actually, it wasn't Rome. I actually know now. It's Naples. Okay, so you can see I'm building a staircase. It's spiralling. It's spiralling towards the centre. So there's one side and there's the other side, which has just got a lot of... Um, blocks there which um, um, are just storage at the moment but this is focus on this side and as we progress with the concrete then you will see how the structure takes form so I'm moving up I'm moving up I'm moving up I've got to infill these ones and eventually there will be another step just about here and then another step and the same is going to happen on the other side and then I will have a platform here where the two staircases from either side meet in the middle. <clears throat> and then I will probably extend this staircase here to go and continue up along here, which is the rim of the temple. So in this area, this is going to be much higher. It's going to have a uh, capacity to hold much, much more water than what you can see at the moment. And... Uh, with more blockage, eventually I will create my ideal height to, uh, to be able to push water around the land uh, as gravity fed and then put a platform over the top of it to prevent evaporation and for other people to come and use uh, as like a, um, um, a centre for yoga studies or meditation, tai chi, uh, forms of martial arts. You have to imagine a platform going across the whole of this structure there even to within these pine trees i'll probably have to cut off a few branches but imagine the whole structure hidden by a platform and then you come here and you do your yoga at six o'clock in the morning yeah and if i don't want that platform and it's going to rain or something's going to happen then maybe i will create uh, just a, a garden for other parts of the year and it would be a uh, a pond of sorts, one an ecological pond. Get your strong mix in first, and then you can uh, add a bit more sand to your concrete later on, just when you're filling in holes and gaps and stuff. But get your strong mix in first so that the blocks don't move. <laughs> From a plastic keep Landing on the toes of my own high school Looking through a fusty window I make towards the moon's way this place uh, I'm closing for a deeper view Reflected on the life of suspended behind me Raining from a fractured door pipe Standing on the ocean's feet I wish one I can guess the source 
your distance on dressing for the scorching heat. I dress my naked body in oily requisite. Don't have for a Polaroid. Cast an action for way into the deep. Walk aboard the fishing boat. Music winds magnetic tape. Pandora charms a mermaid's dream. Prometheus hopes the final flame. in a sacred structure and I hope to be buried here one day so it's not just a water reservoir it's not just a uh, ecological pond it's not just a irrigation system or a center for spiritual studies it's my tomb so basically you're gonna come up and you're gonna walk this way there's the option to create an immediate set of steps going up to the top where there's a platform but the other two ways of getting to that platform is to carry on stepping up boom 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 so i'm not going to step on these because i just put concrete on those need to set so then we've got one step then we've got another step and then there's going to be another step there and if you look at see what I'm doing here I'm stepping down so the other option is to come up from the side of the temple to get to that platform in the middle so if we go to the other side you see the dilemma I have so here we are one step two step three step Four step and then I've got a drop. Mm. Right, so we don't want to use pure concrete. When we're doing block work, we fill in. So I've been excavating an old wall and uh, at the same time designing that part of the land as well. So I've got a load of surplus stone. So I've removed probably about three walls on this land and there's just too many of them. It was just a place to store stone in the day when they levered out the whole farm. So, let's pick up my spillages and pummel in a few uh, rocks. That's what's happening, you see? I've now effectively got a small set of steps going up one, which is one whole block lower than the ones next to it. So I'd have to, I'd have to increase this, I think, by one step to make it work. Or maybe I'll come up with a creative solution. That's the idea. Let's be creative. I mean, I've come up with a couple of new ideas already. So if I'm going this way, I'm stepping up, bang, 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 and then I go up again one more here. Yeah, so let's come back and have a look at that and see what's going on. Or I can just do one step from here over to there, but you'll probably trip up on this, trying to do that, see? So maybe I'll get rid of this one and this one these two and then we're on the same level as these and literally we'd have a big platform going up around there which uh, could do with a statue maybe or two but then we're faced with a sort of interesting wall which could work but we still have that issue 
of you're stepping up here and then you're stepping down here so something to think about and to sleep on don't try to figure it all out I'm reading a book at the moment, it's called Manifesto of the Pie. It's written by the guy, a French guy, I think, who, um, very super educated, started the fair trade movement. And basically, basically what he said is that the whole system enslaves you. And the way it compensates for the poverty in the will is by creating charity. So he spent 30 years and more working with the campesinos. I think they were in Mexico. And basically all they said was is that we want to control our own resources and um, and create our own markets for that, you know, and set their own prices uh, in coffee production. And they did that and all of a sudden they're not poor anymore. They don't make multi uh, billions or millions or thousands even. But what they do make is enough to bring up families, animals, plants and everything else that they need and build their own houses and stuff. So it's a misconception that poor people are in that position because of their own doing. Effectively, what's happened is, is that the, the monocultural plantations around the world, which are owned by multinationals and corporations, who are uh, in effect, effectively economically uh, stealing resources from another country it's a form of colonialism it's economic colonialism and they're doing that and they've been doing it for centuries and it's so it's nothing new it's a pattern that happened thousands of years ago and it's still happening now and it defines how humanity treats poor people it's a misconception to actually believe that poor people don't have their own abilities or capacities to be able to deal with their own problems and when they do deal with their own problems, their integrity changes. Their whole bodily, mind-body balance returns to harmony because they're not being subjugated to rules, <clears throat> to conditions which are imposed upon them. So it's, take that into consideration when we think of like uh, why people choose poverty as a way of life because it's not really to be impoverished. So here I'm, I'm naturally using stone because I have a surplus of it. And it's completely fulfilling. I mean, it's such a wonderful life to be able to create something with your own hands, build your own house or, or have success uh, growing food or something like that. It's incredibly fulfilling. It's a misconception to think that money is going to make you happy because it doesn't. What it actually does, it creates a craving for more money because you're not fulfilling yourself on the creative level. Making money or from, say, uh, investments and stuff like that doesn't, is not really an act of creativity that at the primal level. You know, you've only got to go back to the biblical stories and you will see that on the primal level, it's all about what your hands and your mind can achieve together. Eh? Not just what you're seeing in front of you as a, on a screen. Yeah. And so what I wanted to say is, is that the problem with modern people is that they can't psychologically find a solution for their modern lifestyles because they're not getting creative enough. They're not being able to uh, generate that instinctive uh, evolution or, develop, uh, or I would say um, spiritual awareness of how to tackle a problem or a dilemma. You create sort of little mini goals as you're going along. So you want to complete something. And rather than sort of dropping out and thinking, oh, I'll do it another time, I'll do it tomorrow. That's where people fail and they lose esteem, self-esteem. But with me, the idea of um, self-actualization, the idea of fulfillment is to make sure that you reach your goals for that day. And then you variegate the day so that you've got different activities um, providing different types of stimulation. So I've already done guitar practice, Spanish lessons, uh, concrete now, 
and creative stuff, you know. It's, um, looked at the food tunnel, the poly tunnel, I'm actually repairing the, uh, the cane structure and um, maybe a little bit of planting, that type of thing. You know, the whole day is so mixed that uh, you can't get bored with it. And that's the stimulation. You don't need to take a beer. Um, but occasionally you can get tired and, and you think to yourself, well, okay, let me just go for a cold dip or just go out with the dogs or do something, you know. The idea about being creative is, is that work is play. Yeah. So if your game isn't right because you're a modern person, then you have to see how uh, you need to learn again as if you were a child and keep bringing that uh, impetus that uh, spiritual awareness back into what you're doing because being spiritual is about allowing the unconscious to take form and that's where you are creative well these days you have to really enjoy you know so peace it's sunday and the wind's coming through and just giving you that breeze. So now I'm going to go for my cold dip. Just to make sure I haven't got any tension in my body somewhere. And a beer. I earned it. Check this. King's chair. <laughs> So I've progressed quite a bit. So here's a very good top down view if you can imagine it now. You see it's going to get higher and there's two staircases um, spiraling down until you get to the foot of the wall and then you can follow this one back up. It's been quite difficult to try and uh, centralize this but if you see what I've done here I've put in an extra block to make up the level of the other side but this is very really interesting so you can see I'm building a similar staircase spiraling in the opposite direction down the side of the system and also this way too so there's four ways up and they all have to meet somewhere in the middle now actually the meeting point is going to be more like where I'm standing with the camera so I have to step up maybe three or four more times and have some sort of standing area right there in front of me where I can um, maybe put some statues um, plants, hanging plants, anything you can imagine. I'm just going to need a, an area for ornamentation of sorts. So it's worth having a look from the front and you see some of my design features. You see it's actually a slope. I've been working with that interesting slope right from the beginning. Um, but I have uh, some more designing to do and I'm just going to sleep on a few things but if you look at what I'm doing here with these protrusions yeah it's almost like I'm creating a climbing wall just to give the ability to be able to jump up instead of going around the stairs why I'm not really sure but the other thing about these is that it they link up to the concrete which is behind it and give more support to the wall if anything the wall would want to fall this way in my direction so I'm putting in at uh, 90 degrees various uh, supporting blocks um, springers what we may call them if I was doing a, a dry stone wall that binds the wall further inside so what's my next plan well look at that I found a hole which I'd made and Nothing would fit it until I discovered a brick and I had to slightly cut the bit to shape. And that's going to be my time capsule. I think this is a great idea. I mean, I've never done this before. But why not? So I made this brick. How about this? Uh, two rechargeable batteries, AAA and AA. Then what else did I find? Well, here's an old photo of me. No date on it, but I'm probably about um, 
12 there. What else? From that era. Here we are. Peter Richardson, 32nd Deptford. Um, a badge certificate for the Observer badge. <laughs> that was a fantastic experience. I love the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Here we are. Business card. South London Permaculture. A couple of websites in there, a few numbers. The description of the farm and my olive oil production. Roll that up. Roll it up. Put that one in there, I think. What else we got here? Oh, this is really interesting. Look, a dongle. I think they call it a dongle. It's actually got some books in there. But it's actually breaking. It's actually uh, on the verge of conking out. But why not? I mean, I that's carried around so many different countries on a bicycle. Uh, I've always had some sort of laptop uh, updating this and that or doing something on my journeys. And uh, writing books, inspiration. You know, you can see it's uh, been chewed by the dog. But dongles, we don't use them nowadays anymore. You don't do dongles anymore. But, you know, it's such a super thing that you put that on a key ring or you can uh, put it in your top pocket. So that's got some important files. Whether that will last under these circumstances, I'm not sure. So, a few more things I found. Here's a journey I made. Beautiful journey. And there's my olive oil at the bottom. South London. Permaculture bum bum extra virgin olive oil. And these were the charities I was supporting at the time. When I went to Scotland, I picked up a tandem at Christchurch and I went all the way up to um, the Orkney Isles, Isles and then on to the island of Hoy which which was I was in my element that was so fantastic so let's put that one in there here we are fits in there quite nicely what else we got here one more I think because I'm running out of space and there it is <laughs> there's my mum and a bountiful youth in the UK where she loved so much and uh, on the cliffs at Seaford 1983 so she would have had the uh, business there and the, the wool shop business there and then she would she would have gone out with my stepfather Frank um, often to places in in the UK she loved it and I mean she brought us out and if you can just see that little dog there that's um, beauty I think that's beauty there's a Pekingese and uh, she was such a dog lover and she salvaged dogs from certain death missing you mum but we can't be around forever in life let's put you in there as well and then I found this I mean this is a sign of the times right that dirty old <laughs> reusable mascarilla that is definitely a sign of the times so let's chuck that in whoops this is my time capsule, you see. Now I'm going to slip that in there. It's almost like a secret door. All we need is one. A raven. No, a thrush it was, I think. Knocking.
from Alcorovi and this uh, is my home this is my caravan this is one of the caravans which I favor it's the volunteer caravan but it's my little study home and what I'm gonna do is keep my mouth shut I'm gonna allow you to listen to some of my music and I'm gonna take you on a tour so there is one thing I would like to say before I start and I want you to think about this um, as we go around. And that is, I want you to consider what the concept of beauty is, or the perception of beauty. And I've come to the conclusion that beauty is something implicitly designed. It's the way that we view nature implicitly through its design. Does that make sense? Focus upon the center, everything else is a whirlwind. The stillness is in the movement, the moment is dynamic. What have you got to say, Mr. Weatherman? Wishy washy, wishy washy. Rain all day, rain on, or we for God's sake, rain. Give me a break, bring me a savior. I want a sunshine breakfast. Fly me a golden egg. Sunny side up. Everything go round in circles Nine half dozen th- Half making number Everyone laid in, in white The process in an inceptive fire Swinging conducting draw What have you got to say Mr. Sundansky A shower of gold A ray of lightning Pandora's balls Blows by a flaming bullet. This is your glowing message. One last shot in the dark. Oh, bandido. Oh, for your cheek. Thank you. 
Well, I think that's it for the, until the next stage. Uh, I've done a lot of work. I've finished up my bag of cement and I had some really great afterthoughts, least um, including the top step there. But this, these three pillars have been hanging around our house for like 20 years. Why not? And those three blocks that are protruding out from the front face, well, why not? Um, that's going to have my my imagery, my iconography, my, my statues or burning incense, candles or something like that. Da 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 da